Hi, I'm Mike Cohen. I run the Center for Brain Training in Palm Beach County, Florida. We have two offices, one in Boca Raton and one near West Palm Beach in Jupiter. And we work with in both offices. I have clinicians who run both offices and work with a lot of autistic spectrum kids, a lot of uh, anxiety, depression. We have some seizure cases. We do a number of migraines and a variety of other kinds of mental health issues. I got into neurofeedback because in 1994 my father had a relapse of a severe depression, an agitated depression, sometimes called psychotic depression, and at that point in time he had this episode, nothing worked. Medications didn't work at all. Uh, he was going to uh, Vanderbilt uh, psychiatric unit and see by the top doctor there. Medications didn't work. Uh, ECT did not work, uh, which is shock therapy. Uh, nothing was working. He was really spinning downhill. He was about 77. This holistic psychiatrist told me about this thing called neurofeedback. I'd never heard of it. And as a result, researched it, contacted a number of people around the country who did it, and ended up getting my mom to take my dad six hours away, the closest place. And there was a dramatic shift when nothing had helped him at all. Uh, doing twice a day sessions because he was definitely in a crisis made a huge difference. He could talk to people again, he could read again, he couldn't do any of that. And uh, it was so remarkable the shift that occurred in such a short time that I said I'm going to quit what I'm doing and really try to help get this technology out to other people who provide them provide these services so that more people could have access. So I've been in it ever since and have ended up becoming very involved in the industry. I taught several, probably 800 clinicians. Those are MDs and psychiatrists and psychologists and therapists and nurses, all of whom come for the same reason ultimately. They hear about neurofeedback or they know there's some, got to be something other than meds because most people, once they get experienced in particular, realize there has to be something else. And when they find out about neurofeedback, they first go, boy, this sounds interesting, but I don't know. And once they come to courses, and there are several groups that teach professional courses, I was involved in one of those groups and we taught all around the world. And when those mental health professionals, when those medical professionals come and they see what happens when you give the brain a chance to change because fundamentally neurofeedback is providing, using medical technology to help give the brain a chance to make its own change. And when the brain is able to make that change, you see shifts in function, meaning the part of your brain that plays a role in depression helps manage your depression. The part of the brain that plays a role in attention helps manage your attention. The part of the brain that plays a role in migraines and emotional control and sensory integration, these are brain issues. And people struggle with them constantly and unfortunately medications don't really solve those problems. So the challenge for many people is it's hard to believe how much when you give the brain, when you have the right tool, how quickly the brain can change. And so I tell many, both professionals and clients, that everybody's brain needs to be given a chance to see how well it can do. So people think they have to live with issues. They have to, they are a certain way and they have to learn how to get around it. You can improve your brain and when you do, a whole lot of other things there is a sharing among people in the field of neurofeedback. There's a lot of courses available. There's a lot of mentors available. Nobody in mental health or medical areas or in education got taught this. This is a new tool and you have to learn how to use it. So when you take initial courses, like anything that you learn, you need to refine that knowledge. And 
Actually, learning neurofeedback is incredibly simple. It provides, it measures brain activity and it provides feedback. It's understanding how the brain responds to that information and how to use that information to help create changes. In other words, how does the brain work and how does the brain respond to information is incredibly complex. You can keep learning about the brain forever. And when you have such a great tool, most of the people in our field reach out to their peers and, and suggest that other psychologists, other therapists, other doctors learn about this, offer it to their patients. It's, you know, there's not generally a feeling of, oh, I'm doing this, I don't want anybody else to do it. Most of us feel like this is something that other people should be offering their patients because otherwise you're struggling with brain injury, you're struggling with anxiety, even with medications, even with therapy, a lot of people still have a lot of symptoms. So how do you learn to do this? You know, I participated for six years in a row presenting at the American Psychiatric Association. I did that with two to three other psychiatrists, a couple of psychologists. The people who came, the psychiatrists who came to the course, it was sponsored by the American Psychiatric Association from all over the world, paid for that course. None of the people who presented got paid for that course. That money went to the American Psychiatric Association. Every one of us volunteered to go educate psychiatrists about neurofeedback. None of us made anything. We all had to pay our own way. We did it because we believe this is something important for, for psychiatrists to understand and learn and offer patients. And that kind of attitude, many clinicians educate, try to educate health professionals in their area about it and they're willing to help other people learn how to use it because if you don't offer such a powerful tool, there's so many people who really could get benefit, could improve their anxiety, their learning, their migraines, their seizures. There is a really robust community that helps people learn that the clinicians who actually become attracted to neurofeedback, because I've taught so many courses over the years, I've asked, who shows up? It's the clinicians, whether they're MDs, whether they're therapists, not people who say, this is gonna make me a whole lot of money. It does offer a very important tool. It's people who say, I need to do something else for my patient, and once they learn about neurofeedback, they wanna offer it. Fortunately, there's a great group uh, that really helps people. We're at a conference. The amount of sharing going on at this conference is unbelievable. As many people say, they've never been to conferences in other disciplines where you get this much sharing and openness interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary between different even professions. Nobody has a monopoly on the brain and brain function. And we all can learn from each other and that is really how this field is growing. What's tremendously helpful about Eager is it gives you information that you can see readily that helps you understand your client better, your patient, because the information that you see in the screen, you quickly learn that it gives you a rich amount of information to help you guide your client to learn how to get their brain to function better. And the more you can observe and understand that, and the, it's so easily displayed with Eager, since most people don't know what that information is, it's hard to explain what it is, but very rapidly, it's really the best tool for not only helping show people what's going on in the dynamical brain, but that allows you to easily guide your patient into moderating that activity. And it's a wonderful place for many people to start. You know, this is a process of learning how to acquire a new skill. And this is a very powerful and simple tool to help people acquire that new skill.